Today's video is going to be a little bit of a rant on two things um, that I keep seeing and it, it starts to get on my nerves a little bit. One thing is do-it-yourself fixing and tolerance. They go hand in hand. A couple of different uh, Facebook groups I belong to and uh, you'll get the inevitable question, how do I do this or how do I do that? Most common one is how do I disassemble this or how do I, I put this back together or how do I get this part out? And right away you get everyone jumps on it, hey did you look, you even friggin look? Did you like do something? Eh. I know that's a, that's a, it annoys people that they gotta keep answering the same question over and over and over but it's new people coming into a group, new people coming into a sport, they don't know. They don't know how to find the information out. So instead of being nasty, and this is part of my tolerance thing, being nasty about it, help them out. Which goes hand in hand with do it yourself. And I'll use an example of a question that was asked. It says, how do I disassemble my SIMA AK? doesn't say the model number or anything like that, but it's a SIMA AK. And the inevitable like, responses of, like, idiot, did you look on Google? Did you even try to find any guides? The thing is, you, you want to teach the new people coming in how to do stuff. You don't want to be abusive right away, and then that's their first experience with airsoft is like oh geez when I have a question you can't ask questions because everybody jumps all over you and raises hell. Someone says to me Don how do you take apart a SIMA AK-47? I will say here's your best idea go to YouTube you can do Google but to go to YouTube type in airsoft SIMA AK-47 disassembly. That particular phrase. I said you will find nine times out of ten you will find exactly what you need in a very concise format. Second thing that I've done and had people help me with is if someone has a problem with a gearbox, someone has a problem with this, that, the other thing, take them and I've brought people here and I've showed someone how to take a, a hop-up unit out of an AK, of an M4, of an MP5, how to put a bucking in that hop up, how to put a new barrel in with the hop up, things that you should do, little tricks and, and you know things to get that in place. And it's like the old adage, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, if you teach him how to fish, you, he feeds himself for a lifetime. That's the idea here. You show somebody how to do something, then they know how to do it and they will pass that information along when someone else asks them that. Uh, sorry for the washer running in the back, life happens. Um, so when people are saying to me like, Don, how do you do this? I will be more than happy to try to help them out. Give them my knowledge that I have. And I will be the first to admit, there's always new stuff that I'm learning about. I had a guy come here with, and he's been teching for about a year or two and he says, Oh, I always do this. And I'm like, that's cool. I never thought of doing that. But then there's a dozen other things I've showed him that he'd say, wow, I never thought of that too. So it's a learning process both ways. So helping someone by showing them how to do something, giving them the tools to be able to do that as far as like a video or links or something like that, that will help the person down the road who then will then pass that information along. So you're actually helping the person do it themselves and you're, and you're promoting the tolerance. I see that a lot too and let me, let me jump on the tolerance thing. I actually had a guy say to me that, well a response, that no $200 gun and some $250 pseudo Milsim op, uh, thing, operation, whatever you call it, event, is going to be the same as a $2,000, $3,000, I'm sorry, $3,000 four day event out west and a $1,000 gun. 
It's not going to be the same. My response is that I've seen a $140 CM, uh, uh, you know, combat machine drop in the dirt, drop in the mud, cover the water, shake it off, guy plays the rest of the day, not a problem. I saw a $600 gun dropped once, snapped in half. It's luck. Sure, the quality of the materials, the gun might hold up a little bit better, but there's always that one thing that can happen that'll snap something off or break something or something will happen internally. And it doesn't matter if it's a $140 gun or it's a $1,000 gun. Now, I cannot talk on a $250 Milsim event, which, and he's referring to the Scranton Lace Factory, Red Storm East, compared to a four day $3,000 op. I personally cannot afford that. There's people that can, and that's great. They immerse themselves for $3,000, hotel room, whatever, staying, camping, gear. That's fantastic if you can do that. I can. Other people can. But they can go to a $250 three-day event or two-day event or a $200 event. So trying to compare the two as one positive and negative is they're both airsoft, just different aspects of airsoft that someone enjoys and can afford. If you can afford a $1,000 gun, awesome. But if you can only afford the $140 gun and you have a lot of fun with that gun, awesome as well. Same thing with the gear. Someone makes fun of somebody that went out and they bought a cross draw vest for $24. Oh, I have a such and such JPC model, this, 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 and I paid $870 for this full rig and this and that. And I'm like, nice, really cool, awesome, works great for you. All right, he's running a $24 cross draw. Got his pistol, four mags, he's, he's golden for the day. He threw half a dozen water bottles in the backpack that he put on his back. He had a hydration for the day. He had a radio, stuck it in his pocket, had the earpiece in his ear. He's got everything covered as far as I think having a good day would be. Hell, I've had guys come out with jeans on, stuff two mags in their pocket, walk around with a third, and a bottle of water. Play all day like that. Have a good time. Tolerance. Not only on the airsoft field, but off the airsoft field. Making fun of somebody because they only have a $140 gun, or only have this gear. Or if they ask a question about something. And what, this is one of the things I just saw recently that really pissed me off. Guy asked about a gun. He said it's shooting. He said these guys are, are like chronoed and they're they're shooting over 400. The field allows 400 with a minimum engagement distance of 30 feet. And he said, yeah, it really hurt and it left a couple of marks. They didn't shoot. They shot under 30 feet at me. Well, the comments like, man up, don't be a pussy, you know, those aren't the type of comments that person wants to hear. Negative comments don't help the situation. What you do is you tell this person, if they're shooting under 30 feet, contact a ref. Don't get mad. I said, don't complain about it. Go say to a ref, these guys are shooting under 30 feet. Maybe you should watch them. You know, maybe you should re their gun. Maybe they're shooting over 450. Something's wrong. You know, contact a ref. Get that taken care of. Maybe they don't know what 30 feet is. I see people that don't know what 100 feet is. So it, it's one of those things that it's questionable. People have to know distances. But you also have to be tolerant of the people that are also complaining about that. I had a gentleman with a sniper rifle. Chronoed on two different chronos at two different fields, and including mine, his gun shot 480 with two fives. Spring bolt action sniper. The other two fields, 380s or 480s on those fields as well. Okay, he's using point three three twos. Yet the one thing I instilled in him when he's playing on my field is that a hundred foot. If you don't know what a hundred foot is, I take him to a spot and say, 
look, there's a 100 foot mark, there's the distance. See how long that is? That's your engagement distance, your minimum engagement distance. Someone comes that close, you have to have a pistol. On my field, the rule is if you want to use a sniper rifle, you have to have a secondary. If you don't have a secondary, you cannot use the sniper rifle. Because I've had situations where the guy only has a sniper rifle, the guy gets closer to him, and he still shoots him, causing some injuries. Which then I had to make the guy not use the rifle for the day. That's just my feel. But the thing of it is, tolerance. Being a starting man up, don't be a pussy. Come on. You know, I don't care how tough you are or how like silent you're gonna be after you get lit up. Things hurt. Alright? And getting shot by uh, an almost 500 FPS sniper rifle at 20 feet is gonna hurt. Getting shot by a 450 uh, HPA rifle, what you're using like .43s, is gonna hurt. All right, it isn't gonna cripple you, but it's gonna hurt. And there are safety rules in place for that. So, being derogatory to the person and man up, don't be a pussy. That don't cut it. Which you know, is another part of tolerance. You, you have to, like, be, be aware of the field rules. And you have to be aware of what to do in a situation when somebody violates those field rules. You don't go out and run after the guy and get in his face and start an altercation. That just gets you kicked off the field. What you want to do is, is resolve the situation by either nicely saying, hey, but you're a little close on that shot, you know, or if the guy doesn't seem to want to learn, talk to a ref and say, hey, he's shooting under 100 feet with this rifle. You know, he's, he's causing some injuries. You know, people are bleeding, you know, it's hurting, you know, more than it should. And that's another thing, too, tolerance on pain. One guy said to me, oh, I got shot point blank with a, a 40 mic and it didn't even leave a mark on me. Okay. I call bullshit on that, but granted, he might have leather skin. I don't know, might have been wearing a real head. He said, oh, it was just a t-shirt. Maybe he's got iron-plated chest care. I have no idea. Okay, but that doesn't mean that a particular weapon, say, example, a 40 Mike, shot at another person at point-blank range or, or 10 meters, 30 feet, is not going to do some damage, not going to cause an injury. That's why there are field limits of rounds per second. I had a gentleman come to my field with a 40 round per second uh, DSG build, had a 120 round mid cap, you know, three seconds, he's got 120 rounds hitting a guy in a chest. The guy is all red marks in a big area, black and blue already, and I said, no, that, what the hell's going on here? The guy's using a gun that's over the rounds per second. He was limited to 75 semi-fire for the rest of the day. Pissed him off. But the field limit was 25 at the time. So he was over the field limit, was told to use semi, didn't use semi, shot full auto, so then he either sits the game out or he keeps on semi and we watch him for the day. So being tolerant of people's questions, being tolerant of people, people's reactions to stuff, just because you are like a manly he-man and say, oh, I, I've taken 500 FPS shots to the face with no protection and nothing happened to me. Okay, great, that's fine, but that doesn't mean everybody will. I've had, I've had a 300 FPS BB hit me right in the face here, left a big crater in my mouth, or my side here, blood. So, that was only a 2.5 from about 20 feet away. Hence why I always wear mesh, mesh uh, face protection now anymore. But it can happen to anybody. Your skin, I've got old leather skin, and I've been shot all over the place, and yeah, it hurts, bru some bruises, some marks, but that, to my face, left a red, bleeding mark. It can happen. I don't care how tough you are. So being tolerant of other people, how they react to pain, or their questions about how to do something, or how to do, how, how, does, how does this gear work? How does this uh, uh, piece of equipment work with my gear? You know, 
they're trying to learn, so they're asking questions. And they're like, go look it up on Google. It's like, that question was answered. Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. People are asking because they don't know. You show them how to find the answer. If it's as easy as just searching the forum that they're on, or the Facebook page they're on, the group, doing a search and say, here, go here, do search for this phrase, and you'll find the post about that. Or you go to Google and do this, or you go to YouTube and you do that. That's tolerance. And it shows the person how to do what they want to do. Knowledge is power. If the person finds out how to do the stuff, they're going to do, be a better airsofter, they're going to be able to work on their guns, fix them, and then eventually pass that knowledge on to the next person that wants to find out that information. Say somebody on his squad is asking the same question a year from now, and he's like, oh, I know how to fix this now because this guy showed me where to find the answer and I've done it and here's what you do. And he shows his friend who then eventually will show someone else and down the line. So tolerance and helping people do it themselves is going to be, you know, the most paramount thing that someone can do as a, as a I don't want to say older airsofter, I'm old, but I'm an airsofter but a more uh, an airsofter that's been in the sport for a while. Granted, there's been airsofters in the sport for like a year, and they are phenomenal at teching, doing other things like that, and they're very knowledgeable because they went the extra mile to be able to find this stuff out, or they're naturally talented with working on stuff. Me, I'm not the best at gearboxes, but I'm, I think I'm very good at external stuff, fixing external things. So... It's one of those things, you go at your strengths. Tolerance and helping people do it themselves. That's the end of my rant for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, you guys have a good day. Wow.